five, ten stocks right here just over the weekend in preparation for Tuesday. What I'm looking out for. So look at here, we have NVIDIA. It's holding the 119 and we have that absolute low at 115. So we have to mark a low off of that. We need to see, is it gonna hold this week entering September, which is notoriously known for being bearish. So, but right now it has been showing that it is holding this 115 level. We're sitting at 119. You have a hold there with that rectangle. You have a hold here. Now, if it does test a third time, I'm not gonna buy the dip. I'm gonna just see where it goes. I think it's too risky at this point because you've had one test and you've had the second retest. I don't like buying the third retest. If it does go down to 115, that's a 3% pullback. If we do break the 115, then I think we have a firm check from 115 all the way down to about 106 to 108, which is another 7% pullback. As you can see, I made this level here so you can see it. But you've had multiple retests right in this area, right here, here, right there, and there. So definitely keep an eye out that for NVIDIA. We just have to see how it plays out. If it can make a move up from 119, let's try to see if we can get a retest back up to about 122, because there's a retest right here, and there's support in this area from 122 to 124. So maybe it'll go there, maybe it won't. Next stock I'm watching is DJT. This is the um, Donald Trump stock. I definitely am keeping an eye on it. I'm not going off of fundamentals here. This is purely an election play. I think if he gets elected, we will definitely see a rise in the stock. So I'm definitely looking to potentially take a position, but I've been watching and seeing where do I want to buy them. When I look at the support, <clears throat> I like them around the $14 to $12 range. I'm going to zoom in over here. You can see we had a pump over here up to $80, pulled back down to $19.50. But just look at this area. This is what I'm looking at. You can see that there is right here around this $16 to $14, there's support. And it kind of goes across right to here. And then you can see it, right, resistance right here around $14, $15. Held again, $14, $15, broke through and then it's been holding this zone. So it's not a perfect play. It's definitely risky. This company doesn't make any money. So this is not something that you're buying and holding. This is a swing trade for elections, thinking, you know, who's going to win. But I think it's worthy of taking a shot if we can get a, a little cheaper price. I don't like the $19 price target. I want to see this come down to $15. And then for a potential blast back up to like $30, try to make 100% on this move. And this is a position that I'm taking that I realize I could probably take a 50% loss on this. This could go to $15 and then move all the way down to $7, $8. My absolute buy-buy, I think, would be around 13 because that is the low. You can see it right here at $12.34. Definitely something I'm looking out for. I just wanted to bring it up, just to, something to watch. <clears throat> Next is Tesla. Looking at Tesla just on the five-year chart, you could see that we've had resistance this whole time. It needs major news to actually break through this. I mean, this is, it's its pretty much just trading sideways going down. So if you bought in 2022, you're a bag holder, unless you kept adding on these lows down to 101. But you just got to be very careful. It's a stock that I'm waiting to, I have position in around $150, $160 a share. I want to see it pull back more. Because I, you have this nice pull up from like 188 to 230, but until it breaks this, I just can't see myself going long on it. So I'd rather buy down here around 195, the ultimate 190, to get a, a swing position to get a move back up. So for them right now, this is just resistance, and you know you can draw this out even further. It's not like it's just here. I mean, watch how it perfectly connects. Just look at this. So until this breaks, I just can't go long on them. I gotta see this pattern change because it's just been stuck in this channel. So that's why I'm not going long on them. I have my position down here around 150. So I'm just waiting. I'll add them in the taxable account if we can get them a little lower. Uh, next, I just wanna bring up, <clears throat> let me just bring up the stock, series stock. I bought a, actually a couple hundred, hundred shares of these guys. I put $1,000 into them. And I bought them around $3.11. And I only bought them because Warren Buffett bought them. So because Berkshire bought them around like $3, $4, I said, you know what? I can hold a $1,000 position. I've made money this year day trading. I'm just going to put the money into them and hold on to them. So I'm trying to build this position up to 1,000 shares. 
So I have a cost basis of $3.11 right now, full disclosure. And what I'm doing is it is holding this $2.90. If it does pull back from my cost basis of $3.11, pulls back to $2.90, that's about a 7 to 8% pullback. I'm going to add to them. I'm going to add another 300 shares. I have $1,000 total invest in them. I'll add another 1000 to them. Yeah, this is a long shot. But I look at their earnings. I look at their their dividends. They're giving a two cents per share, and then their their revenue is starting to to grow a little bit. So they're still making money. They're signing some players to their you know Siri and Pandora podcast. So I'm gonna give it a try. Celsius. This is another company that I am watching. I am not buying them yet. I mean, look at this. You have these horns sold up and then died at a hundred. Sold all the way down to thirty eight. I was watching them. I was contemplating on taking a position around $35. That would have worked if I would have bought and then sold at $40. But I want to hold these guys longer term. So what I'm trying to do is wait until they're in the t under $30. And then I'm going to take my entry. So I'm waiting for 37 to break down. I want it to get to like $28. Let's pull back another 25%. And then I'm going to take my position. The reason I am waiting, and if I don't get them, it's fine. I'm okay with it. I I want to wait for this area because I think this is a true swing trade that I can actually manage my risk on. So here was resistance right there. You could see how it's popping and then it rejects, went through and then rejects. And then you can see that right here, it just started showing support again. And I love their profit margins. I think this company has been around for 20 years. They're finally starting to show profitability, and maybe it could be the next Coca-Cola. Things start getting other, other, uh, other brands and other things under them. But thirty-seven dollars back down to twenty-seven. That's what I'm looking for. Twenty-five percent pullback. Then I'll be interested in looking into that. Next, JetBlue. This company is hemorrhaging money right now, so this would be more of a day trade, but. If we can get a pullback down to $4, I would definitely be interested in them. They went up from $7.30 and then pulled back all the way to $4.50 at the 37% pullback. Since that 37% pullback, one of my buddies bought them around there and he's, he's actually selling his 500 shares up here, which is nice for him. That was a good trade on him. I didn't follow the same trade, but he made 15%. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting for that pullback. I want to see it break $4.50. I want to see it come down all the way to about, let me see here, around $4. So this is where I'm looking at right here, $4.12 for them. QQQ, as you can see, it's trading in the middle of the channel. It has been on this nice trend going up like this. So we just, I want to buy it going at like 450 range. September is usually a red month. So I just want to keep an eye on them and see. But if we cannot hold this 470, we are in for some more downside. And then you're going to start seeing moves down to 460 and then 450. And that would be nice. The deeper the pullback, the better, the more shares we can buy long term. All right, guys. So thank you for tuning into the channel. You can see on the playlist here, definitely a lot of stuff for you guys. Fidelity Index Funds, ETFs, the Vanguard Investments, my trading P&L 2024. Check that out. I'm at 49,000 this year. I'm almost at 50 grand for day trading gains, which is awesome. Check out the long-term investments, the penny stocks, trading strategies, and then Fidelity Active Trader Pro, what I use to day trade. And if